Destiny's Gift by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley, illustrated by Adoja J. Burroughs. My favorite place in the world was Mrs. Wade's bookstore across the street from my house. Mrs. Wade knew everything there was to know about words, and I loved words. I went over to Mrs. Wade's every Tuesday and Saturday. As soon as I walked into the store, the wind chimes above the door tinkled a special hello. Hey there, Destiny, Mrs. Wade would call out and stop whatever she was doing to give me a big hug. She smelled like flowers and peppermint and had long silver dreadlocks that fell to her waist. What's the word, Mrs. Wade would ask. Let's go find out, I would say. We'd rush over to the big, thick dictionary Mrs. Wade kept on a pedestal in the store. I'd close my eyes, open the dictionary, and point. Whatever word my finger landed on was our word for the day. Mrs. Wade always helped me with words I didn't understand. We sounded out each word and picked it apart like a puzzle until I knew all there was to know about the word. I wrote down everything in my notebook, which I carried everywhere I went. When I wasn't writing words, I was reading them, gobbling them up from the pages of books as if they were candy. Mrs. Wade's always gave me new books to read. She even introduced me to real authors who came to read their books at her store. I liked to talk to them because they loved words just like I did. That's how I decided I wanted to become a writer when I grew up. On Saturdays, Mama and Daddy let me stay at Mrs. Wade's until closing. I helped Mrs. Wade walk around the store. I watered the plants and fluffed the big comfy pillows where people could curl up and read on the floor. Then Mrs. Wade and I would put the new books on the shelves. Sometimes I'd open a book, stick my nose in between the pages, and take a big whiff. It smelled like ink and grass and the old clothes in my granny's closet. The crisp paper felt like autumn leaves between my fingers. The part I liked best about those Saturdays was the end of the day, after all the customers had gone. Mrs. Wade would set up a tray with peppermint tea and butter cookies, the kind with a hole in the middle. We would drink our tea and pretend the butter cookies were diamond rings around our fingers. Then I would read to Mrs. Wade from my notebook. She'd listen to my stories and poems with her eyes closed. I'd imagine I was a famous author, reading to a room full of people. Sometimes, after I finished reading, Mrs. Wade would open her eyes and say, Words are a very powerful gift. I wasn't sure what she meant, but I felt very important indeed. Then one Saturday, everything was different when I got to Mrs. Wade's store. Instead of talking to her customers or unpacking new books as usual, Mrs. Wade was reading a letter and looking very sad. She put away the letter and smiled when she saw me, but I could tell she wasn't her usual cheerful self. Later, when we had our tea, Mrs. Wade told me what was wrong. She took my hands in hers, and we sat with our knees touching. Have you ever had a really tough assignment in school, but no matter how hard you try, you just can't seem to figure it out, she asked. I nodded. Math problems were always like that for me. Well, I've been trying for a long time to figure out a way to keep the bookstore open, but I haven't had much luck, Mrs. Wade said, sighing. My landlord is raising my rent, and I can't afford to pay the new amount. I may have to close the store. Mrs. Wade sighed again, and I thought I saw a small tear in the corner of her eye. My heart froze mid-beat. Close? No! I couldn't believe it. Why? Why do you have to close the store? I asked, my voice shaking. I need to earn more money in order to pay the higher rent, and there just aren't enough customers for that, Mrs. Wade said. We can get more, I shouted. We'll see, Mrs. Wade smiled, a sad smile. We'll see. When I got home, I told Mama and Daddy about Mrs. Wade's store. I cried so hard I didn't think I'd ever stop. Mama and Daddy wrapped me in their arms. I know how much the store means to you, Mama said, stroking my hair. Maybe there's something we can do to help, said Daddy. Mama and Daddy got on the telephone and called all our neighbors. The next day, everybody on our block came to our house to talk about what we could do to save Mrs. Wade's store. The following Saturday, all the kids in the neighborhood passed out flyers to get folks to come to Mrs. Wade's bookstore. The grown-ups contacted the local TV news stations and newspapers and called Mrs. Wade's landlord to ask him to lower her rent so the store could stay open. On Sunday, we made signs that said, Save our store! and then marched around the neighborhood. It felt like being in a parade. 
The next Saturday, we had a huge block party to raise money. There was singing and dancing and tables full of good food. I helped Mrs. Wade at her table, and we'd sold boxes and boxes of books. I had so much fun, I almost forgot to feel sad. Almost. Even with all the signs and flyers and the block party, I still wanted to do something special for Mrs. Wade. I wanted to give her a gift that wouldn't be that would be just from me. I thought and thought, but couldn't come up with any ideas. What are you thinking so hard about, Mama asked. I want to make a special gift for Mrs. Wade, but I can't think of anything, I said. Well, why don't you close your eyes and take a deep breath, Mama said. Then remember all the good times you had with Mrs. Wade at the bookstore. I'm sure you'll come up with something. I closed my eyes and followed Mama's suggestion. Suddenly, I had an idea. I jumped up, got out a new notebook, and started to write. I wrote down everything I loved about Mrs. Wade's store, from the sound of the wind chimes hanging on the door to the smell of the brand new books and Mrs. Wade's peppermint tea. I wrote all afternoon and all evening long. Mama and Daddy even let me write during dinner. The next morning, I finished writing and ran over to Mrs. Wade's store at its usual opening time. But when I got there, the store was closed. My heart pounded with fears. I peeked through the front windows. Could Mrs. Wade have closed the store without telling me? I was about to go home to tell Mama and Daddy when I heard Mrs. Wade's voice. Destiny, here I am, Mrs. Wade called from her stoop next door. Why isn't the store open, I asked. I just needed some time to think, Mrs. Wade said. Will you have to close the store forever, I whispered. I hope not, but I'm just not sure, Destiny, Mrs. Wade said sadly. It's hard to know if customers will keep coming back. I didn't know what to say. Then I remembered my notebook. I have a present for you, I said, and handed the notebook to Mrs. Wade. Her eyes lit up with surprise when she opened it and saw Mrs. Wade's Bookstore by Destiny Crawford. Why don't you read it to me, Mrs. Wade asked, a big smell spreading across her face. I read every word as Mrs. Wade listened with her eyes closed. When I finished, Mrs. Wade gave me a big, long hug. Destiny, this is the best present anyone has ever given me, she said, beaming. Words are a powerful gift indeed. And that time, I knew exactly what she meant. Mrs. Wade and I don't know if the store will close, but until then, we are going to keep reading and writing and gobbling up all the words we can.